Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to Winners Kids Houston. How are y'all doing today? Wow, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's going to be a good day today. We have lots of things ready and prepared for you. So let's get to it. How are y'all doing? You know my name. My name is Auntie Ronke. And let's get started. All right, it's time for prayer. You know the deal. When it's time for prayer, what do we do? We close our eyes and we hold our hands together. And what do I do? I'm going to check if you're peeking. I see someone out there peeking. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get it together. Okay, I think everybody's ready. Okay, put your hands together and close your eyes. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We thank you for another awesome week. We thank you for bringing us through last week. We thank you for strength and help. And Lord, as we go into this new week, we thank you in advance for keeping us and covering us in Jesus' name. Amen. So now, let's get started. And today we're dealing with why godliness. And our memory verse, we're going to start with that today, is 1 Timothy 4, 8. And it says, a short version, godliness is profitable unto all things, okay? Godliness is the number one thing you got to worry about, nothing else. So now we're going to take things a little bit slow this week. We're going to go into worship. We're not going to be jumping on down, but we're just going to take some time and just worship the Lord, okay? All right, let's go.
many of you here are going through a struggle if any of you here are being attacked by the devil I command that devil to leave you right now because no kind of bondage no kind of chain no kind of curse can keep us here we're going there in the name of Jesus we're going there nothing that the devil is trying to do to me will work no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus because every chain is broken and because it's lifted in the name of Jesus in your name and in your name alone we are free we are free the only way to become free is to declare I want to hear some people declare right now your freedom I want to Jesus name godliness makes us free wow awesome so we're gonna do one more thing we're gonna go ahead and go over the memory verse one more time because we really want you to get it okay we want you to understand what we're talking about here so let's take the memory verse one more time and that will be first Timothy 4 verse 8 and it says godliness is profitable unto all things okay so this week's bible story we'll be going over is samson i'm sure some of you have heard of samson i'm not going to explain much but i'm going to let you watch it and then afterwards you know how we do we're going to go ahead and discuss it all right story A hairy tail. Again, God's people disobeyed him. So God let the Philistines rule over them for 40 years. Then he chose a man named Samson to set them free. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> An angel promised Samson's mother that she would have a son. Samson would have to make three promises to God. Never drink wine, 
Never touch dead things. Never cut his hair. God made Samson very strong. He killed a lion, and bees made honey in its body. Samson touched the dead lion, breaking one of his promises to God. He even ate the honey. Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah. The Philistines promised her lots of money to discover why Samson was so strong. She asked him again and again. Finally, Samson told Delilah his secret. If my hair is cut, my strength will go. So, while he slept, Delilah called for a man to cut off his hair. Samson's strength left him. When the Philistines arrived, they captured him easily. They blinded him. Then they put him in prison and set him to work, dragging a heavy grinding stone. Slowly, Samson's hair grew back. The Philistines brought Samson into their temple to thank their false god Dagon for defeating him. Samson asked God to make him strong one last time. Samson stood between two pillars and pushed on them. The temple fell down, killing all the Philistines and Samson with them. Samson didn't keep his promises, but God kept his. Wow, that was awesome. Oh my. Now you see why godliness is profitable unto all things. It is better to obey. It says obedience is better than sacrifice. Meaning that, you know, you should do the right thing instead of learning the hard way and doing the wrong thing. Okay? And God expects that from us. So we're going to have, as we usually do, we're going to go over some points. Okay? And then we're going to talk about Samson. So we have been, we've been talking about why godliness. And one of the reasons why you need to be godly is that it brings you closer to God. When you're godly, it brings you closer to God because that's what God loves. He loves when you're godly. He loves when you're doing the right thing. He loves when you're obeying his every word. Secondly, you know, God wants us to you know, because he can't be around anything that's dirty. He can't be around anything that's unclean. So he likes us. He loves us rather to be godly, to obey him, to do what he asks of us. And if you want to learn more about that, go to James 4, 8. And in that, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So when you draw near to God, he will come closer to you. So it's very important. Second thing is that it keeps us out of trouble. You know, when you have God on your side. Unfortunately, you know, Samson 
started out right, but he wound it up getting into trouble. So he wasn't able to stay out of trouble. But when, you, when, you, when you're exercising a godly life, when you're living a godly life, it will keep you out of trouble. So another, chap, another um, scripture you can go over is Psalm 34, 16. And basically it just says that God does not like evil. He turns his face away from it. We don't want God to turn his face away from us. We don't want to be left just like, you know, floating just so anything can happen to us. Okay. We need to be close to God. And if you know, when Samson started doing the wrong thing, he stepped further away to God and towards the enemy. So it, 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 God wasn't able to cover him in certain instances. Okay. And there was a step to that because he started gradually before his hair got cut, he touched an unclean thing. And God said specifically, he's never to touch an unclean thing, never to cut his hair. He touched the lion with the bees and the lion was dead. That was unclean. So that was an issue, but God still, he kept going after that. But then the ultimate. So let's keep on. It also makes us shining stars. When you obey God, when you live a godly lifestyle, it makes you a shining star. And a good example of a shining star is Daniel. And if you go to Daniel 12, 3, you will see that when you, when you're, when you're, when you live, when you're, when you're exercising godliness, you become wiser. And then you become a shining star and you meaning a shining star, meaning that you will excel in everything you do. You will always be at the top of everything you do when you're living a godly lifestyle, when you're living the way God says you should live. And godly lifestyles also includes you listening to your parents. Okay, there you go. The next thing you know, it teaches us how to have boundaries. Some of us don't have boundaries. They, you know, your parents will tell you to do something. You don't feel like doing it. You do it at your own time. That, is, that means that you don't have boundaries. You're in school. The lesson, the teaching is going on in school. The teacher is teaching and you are cracking jokes in the class, disturbing the class. That means you don't have boundaries. But when you live a godly, when you exercise godliness, you will definitely have boundaries and you will know not to break boundaries. Okay. And that was one thing about Samson. He was breaking the boundaries little by little by little until he did the ultimate and he cut his hair and breaking boundaries led him to be captured. And, you know, he wound up with the Philistines. He eventually had victory in the end. God gave it to him, but it didn't have to go down like that. All right. Another thing is that it helps us to build character. I will say this so many times. If you've noticed some of you, if I've ever taught in your class before, I always tell you your character is very important. It takes you a long way. Even when you're one it, from like a very young age, your character is very important. And the reason why it's so important is because it is, it, it, it is part of who you are. It is who, you know, it shows the type of person you are. It shows the, what you have in your heart. So your character should be clean. It should be a godly character. You should emulate Jesus the way he lived. You know, that's our Lord and Savior. You should, you, you should do the right things. You shouldn't be found doing the wrong things just because you think it's cool. So, you know, another scripture that we can go over when it comes to character is that let's go over Jeremiah 10, 23. It says, Lord, I know that none of us are in charge of our own destiny. None of us have control of our own lives. God has control of our lives. So we should live a godly lifestyle so that he can take control and help us to build our character. If Samson had, you know, did what God asked him to do, God would have helped him to build his character. You know, sometimes we find that we have some certain behaviors that we don't want, but God can help you to get rid of them. But you need to draw closer to him and you need to live a godly ex. You need to, you know, do live a godly life and living a godly life is sort of the things that I've told you. That I've told you. One of the first things is that Jesus Christ should be your Lord and savior. Secondly, you must obey the word of God. And that says, obey your parent. That's included. Obey your elders. Do the right thing at the right time. Don't do what you see your friends doing in school. Do 
what God says is right. That's the most important thing. Next is that it breaks the chain of disobedience in our lives. When we listen to what God says, when we obey his commandments, it breaks the chains of disobedience. It helps us to destroy it finally. You know, in Leviticus 26, I'm going to go through, I'm going to start from verse 3. It says, if you live according to the Lord, to my laws, and obey my commands, I will send rain at the right time so that the land will produce crops and trees will bear fruit. Okay, when, you, when you're living a godly lifestyle, it breaks every chain. It could be, it breaks the chain of disobedience. It makes it easier for you to listen to what God wants you to do. It makes it easier for you to listen to your parents. You won't have to struggle with disobedience. You won't be found doing the wrong things at the wrong time. So, or even the wrong things, or if you feel is right and is wrong, you know, you get what I mean. <laughs> anyway, so if we look at Samson's life, we see that in the beginning, he was okay, but then he started to step out of the, bound, out of the places where God put him which are boundaries. There is like a line. Boundaries are like this. If I draw a line here and tell you not to cross like this, that means that's my boundary. So you can't cross it. But when you step out of it, which means you're crossing, you're crossing, you're crossing into the place where I said you should not cross in. So that's what God says. Okay, so that is the lesson for today. I hope you all learned a lot today. And we just give glory to God. We're going to go ahead and go over the memory verse one more time. And it says, godliness is profitable unto all things. And that's 1 Timothy 4, 8. And we also have a couple of announcements, but we will take them after prayer. We're going to have our closing prayers now. So you know the deal. Close your eyes. Hold your hands together. Father, Lord, we thank you for today's lesson. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We thank you for the word that we were able to share today with each other. We thank you for everything that we have learned. Lord, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So our announcement is that we're going to be asked, we have an assignment for you. It's the tax for the week. And the tax for the week is that you need to write what are the differences between Samson and Daniel. And you have to read first, uh, you have to read Judges 13 through 18. That's for Samson. And read Daniel chapter 1. But Daniel, compare those two and, and tell us the differences. And we have an email for you to submit that, which you can see on the screen. And it's Winners Kids with a Z at winnerschapelhouston.org. That's where you are to submit all your entries for the tax of the week. You, it's not mandatory, but if you feel like you want to participate and get involved more, go ahead because we surely encourage you to do that. The next announcement is that we're going to be doing birthday announcements, and this is how it will run. For the month of September, we are celebrating birthdays. If your birthday is in the month of September, you should send us your name, number one, date of birth, number two. You don't have to put the year if you don't want and along with a picture. And that's if you choose to send us a picture. And you need to send it to the same email, which is winnerskids at houstonwinnerschapel.com. All entries need to be in by the 24th of September. No later than that. If they come in later, there's nothing we can do. 24th of September. Okay? Thank you so much. I love all of you. Miss y'all. Can't wait to see you again. All right, you have a blessed week.